So, ladies and gentlemen, we have an update on a story that we covered several months ago, and that is the story of the bankruptcy of the city of Detroit, and I am sad to report that it is actually not a positive update. It's actually a very, very uh, negative and sad update. If you don't remember the original details, under an insane right-wing law passed in the state of Michigan, the fate of the city of Detroit was actually taken out of the hands of voters, out of the hands of Detroit's mayor, out of the hands of local officials, and it was given to an appointed, not an elected, an appointed emergency manager by the name of Kevin Orr, who was, uh, who was uh, appointed by the governor of Michigan, Rick Snyder. Um, when that happened... Folks, democracy died in the city of Detroit. The shock doctrine went into full effect. Uh, disaster capitalism went into full effect in the city of Detroit. The emer er emergency manager and the governor, Rick Snyder, went forward and engineered bankruptcy for the city as a means of gutting the pensions of the city workers and gutting the health care responsibilities of the city workers, um, all the while inflating the actual size of the city's debt, which we're going to talk about in, in a minute or so. So the bankruptcy initially went to court, and it was initially halted, but unfortunately we get now to this week's news. Reading from Think Progress, quote, Detroit's bankruptcy may proceed, Judge Stephen Rhodes ruled Tuesday morning in a decision that eliminates the last best hope retired city workers had of retaining the pensions and health care benefits they were promised. Rhodes further ruled that a provision in the Michigan Constitution that protects pensions is not applicable here. And when wiping out the other significant defense retirees had from cuts, end quote. Yeah, so folks, this is devastating news. This is horrible news. And the fact that they somehow went against the Michigan Constitution, because it was very clearly stated in the Michigan Constitution that pensions were a contract and, and, and could not be violated, the judge just said, nah, whatever, we can violate it. Big deal, we can do that now. Who cares about that? They're just workers. They're just stupid workers. But so much, like so much of the austerity and the cuts to the social safety net that are going all over this country... What's going on in Detroit does not have to be this way. It does not have to go this way. It's a choice here. David Sirota actually wrote a column where he pointed out that while the city um, is not going to find the funding to fulfill the actual obligations that they promised to their workers, it is, however, going to find the funding of almost half of a billion dollars in taxpayer money to build a new hockey stadium. That's right, a new a new taxpayer subsidized hockey stadium is clearly so much more important than the promised retirement benefits of the lowly workers, the tiny people, the workers. Oh no, no, no. A hockey stadium is much more important than 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 actually making sure that people don't go homeless when they turn 65. Sirota also notes, and this is actually more important than the hockey stadium. I mean, the hockey stadium is important. It goes to show priorities, but this actually goes to show even further uh, what the priorities of the state of Michigan are. He also notes that the, so the alleged budget gap uh, for the pensions of the city workers of Detroit is allegedly $3.5 billion. And we say allegedly because there is actually ample evidence that the, uh, that the uh, emergency manager and the governor are actually upping that number to actually help push the cuts. The math they use is actually very faulty. There's been numerous reports on how the actual math, it's actually, go it's realistically much less than $3.5 billion. Some say 1.5, but whatever. So let's just say, let's just say, let's take them for their word, which we shouldn't because they're bloody liars, but let's take them for their, let's take their stat, $3.5 billion. That sounds like a lot of money, right? And it is, $3.5 billion, that's a lot of money. However, however, when you dig into this, that alleged $3.5 billion, the alleged $3.5 billion is actually spread out over 30 years. That amounts to just a little bit more than $100 million a year. 
I mean, that's still not nothing. $100 million is a lot of money, but it certainly sounds a lot more manageable, $100 million a year, as opposed to as opposed to $3.5 billion. The reason they're saying $3.5 billion is to scare you and go, oh my God, we can't possibly do that. But it's like, oh, it's, a, it's actually much, much less when you look at it on a on a year-by-year -year basis, especially, especially when you consider, ladies and gentlemen, that the state of Michigan actually spends $6.5 billion in tax Taxpayer money, and that's right, that is a billion with a B, $6.5 billion in taxpayer money for subsidies for corporations per year. That's right, per year, $6.5 billion taxpayer dollars for corporate subsidies per year. Could they take, could they take, oh, I don't know, a hundred million out of that $6.5 billion and pay the workers what they were owed, pay the workers what they were promised, what they're contractually owed? Of course they can. Of course they can. The state is just choosing not to. They are choosing not to. It's all about priorities, skewed priorities, twisted priorities, sick tr priorities here. In addition, in addition to cutting uh, the pensions, it also clears the way of the selling of the art in the Detroit Museum. It clears the way for the privatization of public services, which always goes so wonderfully well. Now, now you probably have heard about Detroit because that's been in the news a, a, a quite a bit, but. But it's not just Detroit. Actually, my former state of Illinois just this week passed its own damn pension gutting bill. They passed their own damn pension gutting bill. The bill cuts the pensions for firefighters, for police officers, for teachers, for nurses, for, for, for child protection workers, for public workers, more, all more workers. The average pension for Illinois is actually a little higher. The av average public pension in Illinois is a little higher from Detroit. It's $32,000. But again, $32,000. We're not talking about millionaires and billionaires here. We're talking about a very small amount of money for people who paid into the system. Middle class folks is what we're talking about here. And what's even crazier is in, in Illinois, most public employees are not eligible to actually get social security. So what they're doing, what they're doing in Illinois is they're actually cutting their entire retirement that these, that these bastard politicians are cutting. Then you know what? You know what? Scratch that. Scratch that. They're not cutting pensions. They're not cutting pensions. They're stealing pensions. This is theft. Pure and bloody simple theft. These pensions are part of, of the, the these state workers' contractually obligated salary. These workers have been paying into these pensions their entire working lives. That's how this works. The pen they actually give this money to the, the, the state, keep the money for all these years in order that they're going to get it back when they retire. And this is not and not an unsubstantial, unsubstantial amount that these workers are paying in. The group We Are One Illinois reports that a typical state employee pension in Illinois contribution, the contribution to their pension is actually eight or nine percent of their paycheck. That's a lot of damn money. Eight or nine percent of your paycheck going into it, but they're doing that because that's part of the that's part of the, the, the incentive of being a public employee that you actually get a pension. You put this money aside. That's that's your retirement. That's the whole damn point. It, they, they put aside that money and they trusted the state, that money, and now the state is stealing it from them. They are stealing it, which is also, like, like in Michigan, it's also against the Illinois Constitution. Reading from We Are One Illinois, uh, quote, The Illinois Constitution states that membership in a public pension system is an enforceable contractual relationship, the benefits of which may not be diminished or impaired. End quote. That's pretty damn simple. That's pretty damn clear. They're stealing from them. And the public employees are going to sue, which is also going to cost millions of dollars in taxpayer taxpayer money. But but hey, it's going to be worth every damn penny to these scumbag disaster capitalists. If they could, it'll be worth it to them if they can destroy what's left of the pension system in the United States. And I want to 
point out something else here. We've talked about this a good deal on the show before, but I want to talk about it again right here because it's very, very apt. And that's the fact is when the economy collapsed in 2008, with, with, with the bailout of Wall Street, so many people were rightfully, rightfully furious that these criminal scumbag Wall Street executives, after crashing the United States econ economy, after crashing the global economy, they, after, by breaking the law, by the way, this wasn't an accident. The crash wasn't an accident. This was criminality that crashed the global economy, that cost people their homes, their livelihoods, their lives, their retirements, their 401ks, thrown to the ground and stomped upon by these scumbag Wall Street bastards. They, which, by the way, they, these Wall Street people still have not been thrown in jail over, need I remind you. But back then, back then, people were rightly furious that with the bailout, these Wall Street criminal executives were still being paid with taxpayer money, mind you, with taxpayer bailout money, these Wall Street criminal executives were still being paid not only their full salaries, but also their bonuses. Millions and millions in dollars and bonuses. But the plutocrats at the time, the, 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 the centrists, the third way types, they argued, they argued, oh, we have to pay these Wall Street executives. We have to pay them. We have to pay them with taxpayer bailout money because, because these criminal Wall Street executives have a contract and all contracts are binding and all contracts are sacred and all contracts must be upheld. The people who were saying that at the time, who were saying that when the crashes happen are the same exact bastards who are demanding that the contracts of these public workers, these state and city workers be shredded, be thrown out. They are demanding, <coughs> pardon me, they're demanding that these working people, these working class people have their meager pensions stolen from them when these workers did absolutely nothing wrong. There's no criminality with what these workers did. There's criminality with what the Wall Street bankers did, but these workers did nothing wrong. They didn't crash the economy. They didn't cause millions of people to be thrown out of their homes to have their retirements destroyed. Wall Street executive criminals did. And now those same bastards are demanding that we rob, we rob working class Americans out of the money that they rightfully set aside in their pensions and earned. And it's a choice. It is a choice. We can pay these workers what they're owed, like we talked about in Michigan, by cutting corporate tax subsidies. We can, God forbid, tax the damn rich more. The same rich who are demanding that we steal from the poor. Detroit and Illinois, folks, it's just the beginning. Many, many people, many third way centrist right wing maniacs and you know are saying that Detroit is this test case to see how we can steal workers pensions once and for all this is what they want to do these monsters are not going to be happy until they have everyone's pensions until they have everyone's social security it's not just going to stop with the pensions this is just the beginning so i guess the big question that we have to be asking right here and right now why aren't all of us in the bloody streets. We'll be right back.